Hey guys, now at this current moment in time, there are three football stadiums being produced by LEGO. Two are based on the Liga, one is based on the Premier League. Two of these football stadiums are retiring at the end of this year, so the purpose of this video is to try and decipher should we invest in these stadiums. So let's get into it. So I'm going to begin by looking at the history of some Lego football sets, because despite these very impressive uh, Lego football stadiums, the concept of Lego football is not a new phenomenon. There's been many Lego football sets over the years. Now, it has to be said that most of these were restricted to, I would say, uh, Subutio inspired Lego football pitches and mainly based on interactive play where you flick a player back to get the goal into the net and they were very generic they weren't based on real players. Now Lego fortunately did take its approach to try and create officially licensed products but their first attempt wasn't great they basically whacked a picture of Zinedine Zan on the box and for them it was job done. Now since then they took a step further and they then they then decided to release these Lego football pitch sets basically sponsoring a, a football team and they would have the football team in the bottom corner of that set but still these weren't great because basically the way they were linked was the torsos of the minifigures would basically have colours that would represent the players that they were based on and they still weren't great you couldn't really decipher which player was which. Now, luckily, since then, things have come a lot further with the very impressive 2016 release of the collectible minifigure series based on the German national football team that won the World Cup in 2014. Now, this minifigure range was great. They were very highly detailed minifigures and you could easily identify which figure represented which player. And I, thought they were, I think they were amazing. And in my opinion, I love them to do that on a wider scale of like Premier League players, that'd be epic, but that could just be a step too far. Now, since then, in, now we're in 2022, LEGO's most recent approach to re representing players in brick form has taken uh, under the theme of Brickheads, and with the recently announced now on sale Barcelona Brickheads and Manchester United Brickheads. Now, I just wanted to mention a bit of history and the fact that LEGO is still actively producing LEGO football sets, because so I think that's a good thing, because hopefully it will keep the football sets that are on sale today relevant and popular once they retire if Lego keep producing football sets. So I wanted to start off with a bit of history. But now let's go to the main focus of the video and I'm going to start off by doing a side-by-side -side analysis of the data involved on the two sets, the Camp New and Old Trafford. So let's get into that now. So let's begin by looking at the recommended retail prices. Now Old Trafford in the UK has a price point of £244.99 and in the US it has a price point of US dollars. Now the Camp New in the UK has a price point of £289.99 and again in the US has a price point of $349. Now straight away you can see there's a significant price point difference there and basically that revolves around the amount of pieces involved in each set because Old Trafford has 3898 pieces and Camp New has 5509 pieces. So next let's look at release date. Now, Old Trafford was released in 2020, uh, February 2020 to be precise, and Camp New was released in September of last year. So that would give them, uh, well, that would give shelf lives of uh, all the Old Trafford set of two years and 11 months, and for Camp New, it would give it a shelf life of one year and four months. So straight away, you can see there that there's a one year and seven month difference between shelf lives for each of those sets. So straight away, we can take from that that there's going to be a lot less um, supply of Camp New in the aftermarket than Old Trafford because Old Trafford's been produced for a year and seven months longer. So next let's look at retailer exclusives. Now I'm not sure about other countries but in the UK these are both retailer exclusives. The Old Trafford set is an exclusive to John Lewis and Camp New is an exclusive to Zavi or which is part of the Hut group. So I think you get it at the Hut and iwoot.co.uk as well. So moving on, let's look at minifigures. Now both of these sets have zero minifigures, which is a shame because I think that if these sets had licensed minifigures representing the players, that would have taken them to the next level. But sadly they don't. Now I know a part of the Old Trafford, um, when the Old Trafford was released, they did a gift with purchase, which I think had the Holy Trinity or something like that, which basically had, some, had three players involved. 
whereas Count knew their gift with purchase um, had a fan celebration which resembled generic fans. Um, it's a shame they did put these players into the actual sets because, again, I said I think they would take them to the next level. But still, um, you know, they're still impressive pieces on their own. So that's a side-by-side -side analysis, and I'm now going to look into the positives and negatives of each set. So let's do that next. So the first and most important point I'm going to mention is that I really consider both of these football stadiums as evergreen sets. And what I mean by that is I don't think that they're based on something that popularity is going to dwindle. They're not based on one of Lego's own themes. They're not based on a movie or TV series where they could just be temporary hype or, or you know craze. They're based on mainstay sport. They're based on football, which is the most popular sport in the world and the fact that it is the most popular in, in my opinion um, I think that there's always going to be new football fans being born there's always going to be new football fans coming from other sport that missed out on this set and I just don't think that the, the popularity in the set is going to change I know there's also talk of particularly with the Manchester United Stadium Old Trafford that there could be a new stadium in the future and which could just make Old Trafford even more iconic and it's for the fact that you know football is here to stay for years decades centuries to come it's just I really consider these sets evergreen and they're always going to be popular so I think that's a really good investment um, you know factor to consider with regards to these sets. So to take that a step further, I think that these LEGO football stadiums, you can really consider them as having two target audiences, football fans and LEGO fans. And for football fans in general, I think that these sets are highly giftable. And what I mean by that is I just think they're great display pieces that football fans not interested in LEGO might not be aware of because they won't be searching for LEGO to buy because they're not LEGO fans, but they are football fans. And I can see that once these LEGO sets retire, you know, there might be struggling spouses or struggling family members not knowing what to buy their loved ones. But what they do know is they love football. And if they love football, they'll think, what can I get associated with football? And then they, they then may come across these sets and then decide to buy them and it's you know it's for that reason I think that these sets are highly giftable and I think they might have uh, a lot of demand in in the aftermarket for that reason but then as always there's uh, Lego fans among us will obviously want the set as well if they missed out on them and they're also you know Manchester United or Barcelona fans so next, I just want to mention the fact that these are retail exclusives. Now, I touched on that in the data, you know, statistics part of this video. But I just mention it again here because it is a positive. Because as LEGO investors, we always like to target retail exclusives. Because in theory, there should be less supply in the aftermarket. Because they're only available at one retailer alongside LEGO. Which should mean that they, again, should be less bought. And again, the word should be less on the aftermarket and we should be able to get the price point we want faster because there should be less competition. Okay, and the final positive is the fact that these are Wave 1 products. There has not been football stadiums like this created before. We don't know if we're going to see any more after these three that are available, but the fact of the matter is these are the originals. So now, basically, when it comes to LEGO originals, you really want to get the Wave 1 products because that's when the waters are untested, and when the waters are untested, it generally means that there's less LEGO investors in these particular type of sets because... Some LEGO investors are a bit more coy and they want to invest in, you know, tried and tested sets on themes like Star Wars or Marvel where you know the returns are pretty much guaranteed but they, and there's less risk. But with these sets where they are the first originals, they are the Wave 1 versions, they do carry a bit more risk because you don't know how they're going to perform. But where there is greater risk, there is greater reward. And I think that's important to consider that these are the first and very original football stadiums produced and they could become quite valuable just because of that. Okay, so unfortunately, we've now landed at the negative part of the video. And the first most significant negative point I want to bring to your guys' attention is that even though you can consider these football stadiums of having two target audiences of LEGO fans and football fans, they're still quite restricted to the clubs that they're based on, specific fan base. And what I mean by this is that you're not going to find any Liverpool fan and you're not going to find any Manchester City fan wanting to buy the Old Trafford Stadium and you're definitely not going to find any Real Madrid fans wanting to buy the Camp New Stadium. 
Now, on the other hand, let's just imagine they released a Wembley Stadium or if they released a Brick Bill FA Cup or Champions League trophy, these sets would then have much wider appeal and therefore be much more desired among a bigger fan base and, you know, generally all LEGO football fans. As they haven't done this and they have just done specific clubs, I think it is, it is really restricting the desire of this set to LEGO fans that do overlap with football fans, which is kind of an unknown that could be quite small. So, as I said, it's really quite untested how well this set will will sell in the aftermarket once it's retired. So, I think that's you know quite important to note. Okay, now the next negative point I want to bring to you guys' attention, it basically revolves around the collectability of these um, football stadiums. Basically because they're huge, you know, these are beasts, they are large scale models. And it's got to be said, is the average Joe going to have room for all these models side by side, you know, on, on a table or some gigantic desk? You know, in my opinion, no, they will not. So it really then shines a light on, you know, do these stadiums have a collectability factor if you've got one will you want them all i'm going to say no just because people won't have room for them now on the other hand if they released these stadiums on a much smaller scale something in similar um, to the architecture range or theme i really think they'd be much more collectible i think if they were smaller and you could have them all on the shelf and let's say you collect all 20 Premier League clubs, or let's say all 20 La Liga clubs, or Serie A clubs, or Bundesliga clubs, I then think they'd be much more desired and collectible, but the fact that they're not, the fact that they're huge, large-scale models, I think really reduces their collectability, for me, in, in my own opinion. So that's the second point I wanted to discuss with you guys. Okay, now the last negative point I want to bring to your attention is that these sets have high entry recommended retail prices. Old Trafford, 2449, Camp New, 289. And the fact that these prices are so high just to buy these sets if you paid retail, you know, if we wanted to achieve that magic 100% return on investment marker, you'd have to sell these sets on eBay in excess of £500 with a final value fee offered to achieve that. And... I'd hedge your bets so that you could probably count on your fingers how many sets have achieved or surpassed five hundred pounds after a year or two retiring. You know, it's it's really not that many. So you've really got to question yourself: is will these sets get there? How long will they take to get there? Now, I think they could get there. Let's say in ten years' time, as I said, you know, if Old Trafford does, you know, if Manchester United do get a new stadium, etc., there could be some, you know, different mitigating factors to make these sets really take off. But for me, I just can't see them having that immediate jump up to those prices. You know, I could be wrong, but I, I just can't see that huge jump that you would need to get a return or a good return on investment on these sets. Okay, so to conclude, now if you normally watch my videos, you will normally see that I show the sets that I'm reviewing, either on the table next to me or as part of a montage where I reveal some of the set data. Can't do that today because I don't own either of these stadiums. And I couldn't even bring myself to buy the Camp New Stadium, even though it's on Lego's own website now with a huge 40% discount off. Overall, I just think these, these sets, while I really like football, I just think that the price points for them is too high. If they were much smaller, you know, price points of, say, £50, I'd be all over them. Hopefully, LEGO do that one day, and hopefully, they also do Premier League mystery blind bags. But until they do that, I for me, these sets are just too expensive, and I won't be investing in them. But if you are investing in them, and there's points I've missed, and there are points that you think will make these sets good sets, please let me know, because I'm open to all advice, and I would love an incentive to buy these sets, because I just love football but I just can't bring myself to do it because I just don't think they're going to be good investments but as I said let me know and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and I'll see you soon